Hi guys, uh, welcome to our live stream for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to our streaming safari. I'm Caitlin. I'm Caroline. I'm Robert. Nice to meet you guys. And we're doing some enrichment chats today. So I know uh, we have a lot of enrichment items. We're going to talk about what enrichment is and why it's important and how much fun it can be. Uh, but first, we do want to say thank you so much for anyone who's already donated to us. We do really appreciate any donations that you guys make. We are a nonprofit, and since most of our money comes from admissions, which we don't have right now, um, we really appreciate any donations you guys could have. Yeah, so for like the cup of coffee that you didn't get today, maybe just donate that to us, and then hopefully we'll see you guys in the future soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. We are going to do some enrichment. So first let's talk about what enrichment is. So um, enrichment is just a fancy way to say some fun stuff, really, that we're gonna give to the animals. So animals get bored just like we do. I'm sure you guys understand that, being stuck at home. <laughs> we all could use a little bit of extra enrichment right now. So enrichment is just a fancy way for us to say giving animals the tools that they need to be stimulated both behaviorally and mentally. We actually have, I think uh, Robert's got the I got side. a list of stuff. So basically there's like gonna be five types of enrichment. There's a social where it's like you could um, uh, have animals interact with other animals or people. There's cognitive, which is like the mental stimulation for animals. Physical is like where you change their environment physically to stimulate them. Uh, sensory is where you add like um, sense or some other type of chemical to their environment to stimulate natural behaviors that they'll do in the wild. And then there's food based enrichment where you can give like ice and stuff like that, frozen fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, you can make meat cakes for like uh, carnivores. And then you gotta actually plan out what you're gonna do. So sometimes you gotta think about it, you gotta observe the animal to see what they actually need because you know you could just give them a toy that they don't ultimately need at all. So you gotta observe them, see what they actually need, then you gotta plan out what the enrichment's gonna be, how you're gonna make it fun and different, and then you're gonna give maybe a prototype, maybe it didn't go so well, and then you readjust, <laughs> you try it again. Uh, like one of our lions here, Swifty, doesn't really enjoy that much enrichment. We gave him ice blocks one day, did not enjoy it, but then we added a little bit of blood from the meat that we feed him, and then he really enjoyed our blood popsicle, <laughs> we called it. So that's kind of rethinking it, making sure that that enrichment is actually enriching the animal. So a lot of planning actually goes behind it too. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely, like you're saying, uh, it takes a lot of trial and error. So we'll introduce one enrichment item. They might not like it at first. They might like it again. I'm sure any parents out there have uh, experienced that with maybe some picky eaters. No, I'm sure nobody. It also differentiates between different animals. Some animals enjoy one thing and another animal won't enjoy the same thing. So we kind of have to rotate around and figure out which animals enjoy what the most. Yeah. And then you actually have to do new enrichment because I mean our cats one thing is they love the smell of ground coffee but we can't just give them that to them every day otherwise it'll become boring so we make sure we only give it like once a month ish and then we try to give them new things and we try to come up with new things every time so that way it doesn't get boring absolutely it's all about novel items so that way that each of these animals are getting new stimulation they're getting new things to check out it's a mentally stimulated a mentally stimulated animal is a happy animal so just like Ringo's helping out here. All right, this is Ringo. We do have Snowy helping us out too. We got a couple birds helping us with our enrichment chat today. They're, they're just a little distracting. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's really important for any animals to get new stimulation. So that way they're mentally engaged. And there are scientists who actually go out in the field. They will observe different types of animals and what kind of enrichment that they might need, that their natural behaviors and things that they're getting in the wild that they may not be getting in captivity. It's really important in human care that we take care of our animals. So we think that while they're in human care, they deserve even better than they would be getting anywhere else. We have a responsibility to them since we're taking care of them and we want them, them sorry, to have the best possible day here every day. So we switch it up and Caroline was saying they do need different, different types of enrichment, especially the here we have a couple birds and they do a lot of foraging in the wild. That's a natural behavior for them. They go and look. We talked about foraging in our last streaming safari. So if you guys caught that one, you saw that giraffes also do a lot of foraging. So one of the items that our birds have, we have one of these 
fun toy. So this is a foraging toy. So Ringo actually, I just added some new stuff in here because this was Ringo's and he actually pulled all of the fun stuff we put in there out. So this is a fun way for him to try and figure out how to get the enrichment out of this box. He's got a couple different sized holes that he can reach his tongue and beak in to try and do some foraging. Um, I think giraffes have some forage, do a lot of foraging too. Yes, because they're spending 18 to 20 hours a day looking for food. So we have to find interesting ways to make that fun for Ozzy. Now this, we used this when he was a lot smaller. Now he's a lot bigger and we basically made bigger ones for him. But this is what you call a puzzle feeder, where you put different types of food, like bird pellets here. You'd put it in the puzzle feeder and then instead of eating it like in a minute, it makes it a little harder for the animal to get the food. They have to actually work for their food and it makes it fun and interesting. It makes them use their brain a little bit. So uh, if this looks familiar at all to anybody, this puzzle feeder is actually made for dogs. You can purchase these at your local uh, pet shops for your dog. So if they eat a little bit too fast or if they cough or you know have digestive issues, this is a great way to slow down your dog so that way they can actually sit and enjoy their food. Uh, and especially, you know, probably watching them eat and choke down food isn't the best most times so you can reuse you know different uh things can be used for different animals so what what's type I, I got some boxes we were uh, decorate the boxes to holidays or things that are going on to kind of um stay with a the theme um these boxes we're going to be putting stuff in depending on which cats these will probably be putting um giraffe feces or shaving in to um you know, stimulate the, the lion's um, sensory. We'll close them up, hide them in their enclosure somewhere, and the cats will have to find it, and they get to destroy it, uh, take it apart. Uh, we'll put other stuff in them, uh, blood sickles. Um, uh, some will just use other scents, like peppermint and stuff, or um, elk urine is one of the things we like to use. The cats enjoy that a lot. And then we Why have... do the cats like some uh, they like to mask themselves in um, other scents. It's kind of like uh, how a soldier would wear camouflage. Um, they will roll around in these different scents to hide their presence from other animals. Uh, they'll typically try to hunt like downwind or whatnot, so when their scent is blown around, the animals don't smell them coming. Um, it makes it a lot easier for them to hide when an animal doesn't smell them. So it looks like we have questions coming in. Yep, how do you keep Ringo stimulated? Uh, so Ringo is actually our baby, so he's our youngest macaw. I'm come down here and show off, maybe. Move all my papers, thank you. So you can see he's still a little bit wobbly. He's about a year and a half, um, and yeah, he needs a lot of stimulation because he's a baby, and babies need a lot of stuff to do. So he has all kinds of different toys. Like I was saying, this is actually one of his. I snatched out of his yard, out of his cage, so that he, uh, that's one of the ones he usually plays with. You can see the perch over here. So that's one of his perches. All of our birds kind of share that perch and they have a lot of different toys and things. He's actually practicing flying also. So he's doing a lot of socializing with us. Parrots are really social animals and they require a lot of social stimulation. So Ringo here, when we interact with him and talk with him, that's one of his favorite uh, enrichments. So right now he's actually being enriched as we speak. He's hanging out with us. He's doing something a little bit different. So he gets to do something fun. He's apparently so grooming This would be considered too. social enrichment. They get to socialize with someone. Uh, Snowy, uh, she's bonded with me after her owners relinquished her to us. And um, she gets a lot of fun hanging out with me. Yeah, a lot of our animals are actually pets. Or a lot of our parrots are pet surrenders. So these guys are really um, noisy. And they're really busy. It's like having a two-year-old for the rest of your life. So it's a really big commitment if you guys do get one of these as a pet, and so a lot of people um, will give theirs up. So we have quite a few rescues here. Right. Should we talk about how enrichment does need to be safe as well, though? Yeah, definitely. So uh, enrichment, when we give it to them, we want to make sure it's safe. So for instance, these rubber bands that are sitting right by Ringo are really enticing to him, but he can't have any. He can't have that, no. Because they're not safe. So we do want to make sure any of the enrichment that they do have is safe for the animal we're giving it to. And a good way to remember that is you ask yourself three questions. If I give this item to an animal, are they going to drown? So if you're ever doing anything with water or you have any instance where the, the animal could get trapped underwater or get their head stuck where there is water, you wanna make sure that they are safe and there's no way for them to get stuck where the water is because you don't want anyone drowning. Uh -huh. 
Another big one is that will the animal accidentally ingest something they're not supposed to? Because we do like to give cardboard. Luckily, that's something the cats really do like to shred a lot. But we do monitor to make sure these lions aren't eating cardboard because if they eat cardboard, that'll probably upset their stomach quite a bit and we might need to go see the vet for that. So if we notice the lion is eating the cardboard, we make sure that we don't give that cat cardboard ever again. So when you're giving enrichment to your animals, you gotta observe them uh, interacting with it so that way you can make sure that they're not eating anything they shouldn't be. And then you wanna talk about the last one? <laughs> Um, so this is basically like, um, can an animal get stuck in something? Uh, let's say uh, we make the animal a hammock or something. Uh, a hammock we would braid with like fire hose and stuff. We have to make sure it's braided properly or uh, weaved properly so a lion can't get its foot or paw stuck in the, the braiding of it. Uh, we've got to make sure the enrichment's safe. Like uh, if we wrap, uh, like let's say her perch with rope, we got to make sure that rope is tight and fastened to the branching so that she can't get her uh, her claws or her talons or fingers stuck in it. And this is actually a perfect example of that over on our perch over here. Denise is going to zoom in. Um, we wrapped this branch with some rope just to make it a little bit prettier. They can chew on it and stuff, but it's not loose enough to where we can act, they can actually get their claws stuck because and they're never unsupervised with that. So if you are leaving any animals unsupervised with enrichment, then you definitely need to make sure there's nothing that they're going to get into. Think little kids. <laughs> you gotta baby proof your home. Same thing with enrichment. You wanna baby proof that enrichment, make sure that they can't hurt themselves in any way. So we do have a fun craft for you guys because animals aren't the only ones we can enrich because we want enrichment too. And I'm sure everybody's looking. That's why you guys are watching our videos, right? You're looking for a little bit of extra enrichment for you. Because you guys need something extra fun to do while you're stuck inside. So we have a few different options. We're gonna be making some fun enrichment. Um, I think I'll make a pretty simple one. So we're gonna do a couple different things. And we're gonna make some, sorry parents, <laughs> noisemakers today. So I'm gonna do a pretty simple one. We what kind of noise? What kind of noise? Good question. So, um, kind of like a rain stick noise. So we're going to make a little bit of a shaker. So as we put on the items you're going to need, you're probably going to need some paper of some sort or tubing also works if you have any cardboard tubes. I know those are a little hard to come by nowadays, but um, yeah, if you have some cardboard tubing from paper towels or toilet paper, uh, you're also going to want some decorating items, so if you have markers or crayons. Different color paper. Color. Yep. yep, perfect. So um, we also have one that you can do with tin foil, which is our little bit more complicated ones. So which I'm going to be working on. Um, one of our fellow keepers, Kylie, invented it. So, uh, <laughs> and we voted Robert has to do it. So <laughs> he gets the hardest one, so maybe if you have a little bit bigger kids or you're looking for a little bit more of a challenge. We're gonna make a more rain stick sound and rain over there. I'm gonna do a pretty simple one. And Caroline, I'm actually making one that you can make for your pets at home if you're interested. We have one that's made just out of paper. There's no tape, no glue involved with this because obviously you don't want your cats or dogs to eat any tape or glue. It's just all really fancy folding. So if you take your piece of paper, you're gonna kind of put it in thirds like this, kind of maybe kind of half fold it so that way it stays in place. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of scissors. You're gonna third both sides like this. So we'll go like this. Perfect. And then what you're gonna do with those, you're just gonna fold two of the sides one way like this. It'll cooperate. And then you're gonna put the other one this way, so that way, that side of the uh, tube is sealed. So we'll continue doing it on this side. Fold two of them one way. Oops, maybe. And then the middle one the other way. So that way, you have an enclosed tube that didn't require any tape or glue. And then, just like this one is, you're gonna open up the middle you're gonna kind of fold it out of the way. You can put 
uh, maybe their kibble in there or you can put fun treats that they only get every once in a while so that way the dog or cat at home has to actually work to get their food so again they're not just sitting there eating mindlessly they actually have to use their brain to make sure that they can get the food out of it so maybe if you have spare paper at home you can make your dog or cat something fun for them to do all right while caroline works on putting her hole in the middle so we can mm -hmm. add some treats in there i'll show you guys how to make this a little bit simpler one so for this one you're gonna do something similar you're gonna take a piece of paper but this one you're gonna roll i'll get my uh, bird enrichment on the one you're gonna roll it into a tube this is in case you don't have a paper towel or a toilet paper tube if you already have one of those you can go ahead and use that it's just different options for what you guys have sitting around the house so if you have tape, if you have staples, that's when you're gonna wanna grab it after you have your tube ready. And you can do different options. So Caroline was talking about the safety since she was giving hers to pets. She wanted to make sure there was no staples or tape or anything because that's really unhealthy for your pets. So you always wanna be careful that you're not giving them anything. The paper's gonna be okay. But any of that other stuff could be sharp or scary. So if you want to use a stapler, you can use that for this one. And you just want to staple your tube together. Do we have a question? No, I'm getting a warning on the phone. It's getting a little hot, so if it ends, oh. we're sorry. <laughs> and we'll finish recording and post the rest of it. It just depends on if the phone turns off. If Deshaun, you want to record on this side just in case it ends so you don't miss anything. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right, while we're, we'll post the rest of the video. So if it ends, just stay tuned and we'll try to post that as quickly as possible. Um, it while I'll keep going and we'll see how the phone does. <laughs> Technology, gotta love it. So you can staple your tube into a tube or you can tape it. So I also have some tape here. I'll tape this side. You can see how that goes. It's really up to you what kind of fastening you have. If you have glue, you can glue it too. You're just gonna have to hold it a little bit longer. Once you have a tube, you're pretty much halfway there. So you're gonna take this end and you are going to close it. So if you have tape, you can close it with tape. If you have a stapler, you can close it with a stapler. You're gonna close it that direction. Now we kind of have a pocket. So we're gonna add something in the pocket. I'll add some bird kibble, because why not? If you guys have dried beans, rice, really anything that's gonna make a little bit of a noise in there. Did you want some? <laughs> that's his bird kibble. So if you put that in there, you can see, makes a nice sound. Now, instead of closing it this direction, because then your shaker won't work quite as well, you're gonna pinch it the opposite way. So if this one's pinched flat this way, you're gonna pinch this one tall that way. So pinch it and close that end up. Oh yes, the stapler is fine. That's not good enrichment for this. And there you have a nice, simple shaker. Then you can go ahead and decorate this any way you want. You have markers or crayons, you wanna do a collage, add some strips of paper on there, but you are good. So far, a little bit more complicated one. Are you guys bear with me? Um, we did want to mention um, that uh, we do make um, keychains out of the enrichment that our cats uh, do get to destroy. Uh, so this was a thimble. They're about uh, a foot tall and about eight or nine inches round. Um, you can see there's teeth and claw marks in this. Um, this was all done by Cheeto. Um, these are keychains we do sell and make um, out of old enrichment that the cats do destroy. So um, I'm not exactly sure how Kyle made this, so um, <laughs> I'm going to try to replicate it. I think she, what she, her ideal for this was um, to make some twisties out of the tin foil inside. So when I feel it with the the rice, it'll make like a kind of a shingly ring sound. So let's try that. before so it's exciting oh Caroline's getting creative so you see she used the scissors to spiral hers a little bit I think if you have a broom handle if you have a spoon handle anything you're gonna there you go glue stick you can spiral that around 
not sure how she closes these up. So that works good. Or if you want, you can also take the end of your tube and trace it right on the paper. Maybe. I think that will seal it a little better than what I did. Or you could probably just use a stapler just like she did. Just pinch off this end and staple it sealed shut. And then you can actually draw a bigger circle around that because you're going to need that extra space. And, and I'm assuming we're just going to tape it around the edges. We of are exactly. I guess I shouldn't have been so mean. And I could have this <laughs> so if you cut out your little, because um, I at least saw what uh, Kylie was talking about when she created this. They try to set me up. <laughs> we, right. are, we are definitely zookeepers. So she, she cut the edges on this so they fold down a little easier. Uh, yeah, you, we get along pretty well here. You know, <laughs> just, you know, like siblings, we like to pick on each other every now and then. I'm sure none of you have that problem at home. <laughs> If you guys did have any questions while we're doing this craft, don't hesitate to ask. Throw them at us. We got all kinds of stuff that we were happy to answer. Go ahead. What is the thing behind you? Perfect question. Waiting for someone to ask that. So um, this is one of our projects we're working on. We are actually doing a lot of different projects while we're closed down here. We're working on getting a lot of new fun stuff open, up and running. So when you guys get to come out and visit us again, you'll have all kinds of cool stuff to see. So one of our projects we're working on is this fun face cutout board. So if you guys have ever been to a carnival or anything and see those cool boards where you can stick your face in and look like any kind of fun thing, we got some lions. So you can actually come and be a lion. And we're still working on painting it so you can see it's not done yet. Uh, but we do, we did try to include a lot of our different animals that you'll see here. So we have an ostrich up on the top that we're working on. We have Ozzy in the middle with a paintbrush in his mouth. And we got a parrot, a couple lions, and behind Caroline, you probably can't see it, but there is a tortoise back here. So we are still working on painting that, but by the time you guys come out, it should be all done and set up and ready to go, hopefully. So we are working hard here every day. So we come, we take care of the animals, we're getting all this stuff up and running, so that hopefully when we get ready to go, you guys can come and see all this cool new stuff that we've been working on. Great question. Check in with Robert, see how he's doing. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we got one side sealed and then Robert poured in rice so that way you can actually make sound out of it. So it'll make plenty of noises off of the so tin foil put in there. Yes. And the now there he is, it's gonna make a nice shingly sound as it bounces off the tin foil as you rotate it back and forth. Yeah. It's kind of like your own makeshift ring stick. And uh, we have other colored paper that we're gonna glue on here to decorate it. So let's see how it yeah. sounds. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. That was pretty fun. Not as loud as what we thought it was. Yours might be better because you know, <laughs> Robert. <laughs> but <laughs> you might be able to get yours to sound a little better, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, don't worry about it. If you don't like that one, you can always try one of these other ones that we have here. I decorated mine while Robert was working over there, so I have stars on mine. So feel free to add any of your own touches. I think Caroline got her hole I, in the center. I did. I tried to give it to Ringo, um, but he was uninterested. So And that happens a lot. It does happen <laughs> a lot. So It's all about experimenting. He says not today. Maybe tomorrow. We'll yeah. see. Good job. Well, thanks for checking in with us and hanging out with us while we did our fun crafts. And I hope you guys uh, 